Hello everyone, welcome to Botany Option Channel for UPSC Examination. In today's video, we are continuing the agency of pollination that is the hydrophily. This is our second video. Before this, we have seen the first video in which we have seen in detail the anemophily that is the pollination by using the wind, right? In this video, we are going to focus on the hydrophily. The hydrophily, as you know, it is very popular that is the pollination by using the water. So those plants which are which use water as the pollination agency comes under the hydrophilus plants. All right. So before starting the video, I request you to join the Telegram channel of the same name that is the bottom optional for UPS examination. There we regularly upload the PDFs of these videos and link of these videos so that you will not miss any update relating with the botany channel. All right. So let's learn about the hydrophily. Now, first of all, what is meant by hydrophily? This word hydrophily is made up of two words. First is the hydra and second is philly. This word hydra, which literally translates to the water and philly means loving. That is, those are plants which loves water, which loves to live in water. Generally, in English sense, we call them as a aquatic plants. So the aquatic plants are said to be the hydrophilus plants. In these plants, the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma occurs with the help of water as an agency. And this phenomenon is called as the hydrophily. That is, the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma by using the water as agency is called as the hydrophily. You can observe in this particular picture. This is an Valisneria plant and which is submerged in the water and they are showing the male flowers and the female flowers which are pollinated by using the water. So the pollination by using water is called as the hydrophily while the plants which shows the hydrophily as are called as the hydrophilus plants. That is the Valisneria is a hydrophilus plants. You should remember a famous example of this hydrophily is a Valisneria because it is given in the every textbook and reference book. So you should mention these examples while writing down your answer in the mains examination. All right. So the hydrophilly is nothing but the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma by using the water as a agency. All right. Let us consider what are the floral adaptations acquired by the plants to use the hydrophilly. That is in anemophilous plants. We have seen the floral adaptations which are relating with the anemophilly. Now in this video we are we will see the floral adaptations for the hydrophilly. Flowers are mostly unisexual and the small. Now this makes sense because most of the flowers are born with only one sex. That is where either flowers are female flowers or the male flowers. Then from male flowers, pollen grains travel to the female flowers to pollinate the flower. And generally these are very small in size. Because these plants has to be the weightless, right? To, to be float on the surface of water. And that is why size of these flowers is mostly small. That is why the size of these flowers is mostly small. Now the second adaptation is the pollen grains are unweightable. That is the coated with the mucilage. Now when the pollen grains are transferring from male flower to the female flower, they have they have to go through the water because water is the main agency in the hydrophilly. Now while traveling through the water, the pollen grains is adapted to be the unweightable. That is they do not get weight because they have surface coating with the mucilage. If pollen grains get weight, they will acquire the weight and go below the water surface. In order to avoid this, the pollen grains in the hydrophilus plant is always unweightable due to the presence of mucilage. This helps the pollen grains to float on water surface. Right Now the third adaptation is the stigma is very long and sticky. As you know, you can, you can see here, this is a female flower and its stigma is very long. This is because it has to be go out of the surface in order to get the female flowers and that is why the stigma is very long and at the same time it is sticky that is once the female once the pollen grains landed on the stigma stigma should be able to hold these pollen grains till they germinate and that is why there is a floral adaptation that the stigma is sticky in nature all right so we have seen the three floral adaptations for the hydrophilus plants first is the flowers is mostly unisexual and small second the pollen grains are unweightable that is they are coated with the mucilage and third one stigma is long and sticky all right now let's consider the types of the hydrophily. Now there are two types of hydrophily. First is hypohydrophily and second is epihydrophily. Or these are two types of hydrophily is given on the basis of whether the flower pollinate below the water surface or on the surface. If the flower gets pollinated on the surface, then it is called as epihydrophily. And if they got pollinated below the water surface, then it is called as hypohydrophily. The Velisnaria shows the epihydrophily type of pollination while Ceratophyllum shows the hypohydrophily type of 
pollination that is its pollination occurs below the water surface so there are two types of the hydrophily first is hypohydrophily which can be seen in a ceratophyllus which occurs below the water surface and second type is the hypohydrophily which occurs on the surface of water which can be seen in the valley area all right so we will see these two types in detail let's first consider the hypohydrophily now pollination occurs below the surface of water that is in a hypohydrophily the pollination occurs always under the surface of water in this picture you can observe this is an ceratophyllus which has underwater flowers all right it occurs in hydrophytes bearing submerged female flowers that is hypohydrophily is common in the hydrophytes which bears female flowers which are submerged into the water now the plant produce needle like pollen grains which lacks the egg site now needle like pollen grains they have the shape like this which is resembles the needle and when this needle like pollen grains go below the surface of water when they lack the outer surface of the pollen grain that is the exein due to which what happens when they comes in a contact with the female flower very quickly the end time that is the inner covering of the pollen grains rupture so quickly and the pollen grain germinates very easily so not having the exein is advantageous for the hydrophily because there is a very less time while the while the water is flowing when they comes in the contact with the female flower end time which is a soft covering of the pollen grain breaks very very easily while the exein being the hard covering in the pollen grains would have create a difficulty when the pollen comes in contact with the submerged flowers all right where the pollen grains comes in contact with the stigma they coil around and germinate that is when under in under the water these are pollen grains which lacks the exein comes in contact with the female flower they quickly coil around and starts to germinate so this is how the underground pollination occurs in the hypohydrophily you should remember carefully that in hypohydrophily the pollination occurs below the water surface secondly it mostly occurs in hydrophytes where there is a submerged female flowers and in these plants the pollen grains is always a needle like and plus very importantly they lacks the exein on their pollen grains so that pollen grains germinate easily on the female flower when pollen grains comes in contact with the stigma they coil around and start to germinate all right so this is how the hypohydrophily occurs now the next type is a epihydrophily now of course the pollination occurs on the surface of water as you can see in the example of valesian area the pollination is occurring at the surface of water not below the water now female flowers are still in valesian area are submerged under the water but still the pollination occurs at the surface of water now we will answer this question in next few minutes see in valesian area male and female flowers are produced on the separate plants that is one plant possesses the female flower while other plants possesses the male flower that is they are unisexual flowers now what happens at the maturity the male flowers detach from the male inflorescence and begins to float on the surface of water now what happens when the male flowers get mature they detach from the plant and they starts to flow on the surface of water as you can see all these are male flowers which are floating on the surface of water now at the same time when the female flower maturates which have very long pedicel starts to uncoil now see in this particular picture you can see here the female flowers which are not maturated and they remain below the water surface now as they become mature they uncoil themselves you can see here they are uncoiling and they have a large pedicel and due to this uncoiling this female flower goes above above till it reaches the surface of water so uncoiling of the female flowers make the flowers to go on the surface of water where there is a floating male flowers now when the male flowers and female flowers are at the surface of water then the anthesis takes place which results in the pollination all right so when these are flowers which reach the surface of water they comes in contact with the male flowers so here is the union of male and female flowers and there is a process of anthesis which simultaneously results in the pollination so this is how the pollination occurs in the epihydrophily that is at the surface of water valesian area is an example for this and in this plants the male and female flowers are born on the separate flower at the maturity the male flower male flower detach from the male inflorescence and float on the surface of water and the female flower starts to uncoil its pedicel and comes to the surface of water where there is a union of male and female flowers which results in the anthesis and subsequently into the pollination all right so this is how the epihydrophily occurs all right 
I have intentionally written down all these points on the slide so that you can take the notes accordingly. So after the lecture, you don't have to find the any type of study material for this particular topic. All right. So this is all about the hydrophily. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please like the video. Please share this video with your friends who are studying botany. And if you have any doubt or question, please make comment in the comment box. And if you haven't subscribed to the botany option channel yet, please subscribe to the botany option channel for UPSC examination. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next one.